Hey friend, Chris Van Deviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Now the last couple of weeks have been exciting. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we got the 10.5 update. Over last week, posting a new walkthrough tutorial of all these bombastic new features of the update. And now that we're a little acquainted with 10.5 and what it brings to the table, I thought it was a good time to just take a step back and reflect on where we're at with Logic Pro 10, what all these new features entail for us Logic users, and really why I believe 10.5 was exactly what needed to happen to Logic Pro 10. I think 10.5 puts Logic in the territory that it needs to go. And I have three reasons that I believe that Logic is exactly the piece of software it's turning into and needs to become for a creative community. And so I'm gonna explore those three ideas or reasons, and really they're just speculations, hypotheses, what I think is really cool about the software, because I think about the software a lot these days. But I think these new features and all the features that have come before since Logic Pro 10 was introduced in 2013, I think it's just fantastic. And I really think that the audio industry at large needs to start sitting up and paying attention to what Apple is doing with Logic Pro 10. So let's dig into this. So number one in our list of why 10.5 was exactly what needed to happen for Logic Pro 10. And honestly, I think it's because there's a whole new generation of creatives, of producers, of artists that are working in non-traditional and non-linear ways of songwriting and creating and performing. And honestly, just to not think about this whole new crop of creatives would be erroneous as an industry, as us creatives, and for Apple with Logic. It'd just be erroneous to not consider the whole new Ableton, Fruity Loop style of working. And though I am not accustomed to that workflow, especially in the live loops territory, I mean, I grew up playing guitar, playing bass in a band, getting together with a drummer, with a singer, with a songwriter, and just rehearsing it out, going and playing shows, and then hitting the studio. I get it, that's the way I grew up creating. But there's a whole new generation growing up creating, and they're used to creating on a computer, and that's their instrument. Their iPhone, and that's their instrument. Pulling sounds from wherever they find them and chopping them up and you know, just throwing them against the wall to see what sticks and what doesn't stick. And I just think it's erroneous to disclude them, especially from a company standpoint. These are the creatives that are going to push culture forward. You know, Look at Billie Eilish, look at her and her brother Phineas. They have pushed the concept of pop music in a direction nobody saw coming. It's not Katy Perry, it's not Lady Gaga. It's like minimalist, almost industrial at times. Very little reverb on the vocals, if any. Whispery, quiet. They pulled sounds from like a traffic light. I saw, I, they were doing an interview somewhere and they pulled a sound from a pedestrian crosswalk in Australia and used it for like the hi-hat in a song. That's mind boggling. And I think it's really cool that this new generation of creatives are not hampered or burdened by the concepts of being authentic or, you know, does it sound real? You know, that's like something that when we talk about amp emulators, does it sound like the real thing? They're not burdened by these concepts. They're just making music and it doesn't matter if it's on their phone or on their MacBook, they're just making it happen. And I think that's awesome. And to kind of disclude these tools as gimmicks, as I've seen a couple people say about live loop, step sequencer, etc. I don't think that's an appropriate response. Does this latest update fill the needs of those who are doing film composing? Maybe, maybe not. For rock guitar players, for singer-songwriters? Maybe, maybe not. But in my opinion, if they want to pile feature after feature for 200 bucks into this piece of software that I paid for back in 2013, please do. I will take it all. Because every tool will have its place eventually. And it just further enables us to get down to creating and logic standing out of our way for our creative process. Now, are there things that could be improved or fixed about logic? Of course, we all have our list. Those of us who have been using logic for a long time, we know the ins and outs. We know where logic excels and where maybe it could be improved. And nobody's arguing with that. In my list, I would love for when FlexTime analyzes a whole audio file that it placed the transient markers not kind of like in the middle of the initial transient, but at the zero crossing. I would love that. Flex pitch, which I use routinely, but you know, it's not perfect all the time. There are some little hiccups here and there, and I would love for those to get smoothed out. Additionally, I would love to see the multipressor finally get a reskin because that's a tool I love, and I would love to see a dynamic EQ in Logic. Absolutely, there's a list that we all have. I'm not worried in that territory though. 
Will it take a while? Probably, but I know at the end of the day, it's going to get fixed. It's going to get improved upon. And if it hasn't been improved upon yet, then it probably is not a simple task. That's my speculating. But you look at the release notes for 10.5 and every other major update, 10.5 is like 20 pages of bug fixes and improvements. They're doing a lot under the hood, so I'm not too worried. I say pile on the features, even if I don't need it right now, like live looping. I don't foresee myself using it a lot, but throw it in. I'll take it. Number two in our list of why 10.5 is exactly what needed to happen in Logic. And I don't know if it's necessarily a reason, but at this point, I can't think of anything Logic can't accomplish for its users in its current iteration. And whether you score for film, whether you're a singer-songwriter, you're a rock guitar guy, whether you are a producer, hip-hop, pop, whatever, Logic has you covered at this point. And it's just, the whole toolkit is just so robust now. Back in 2013, when 10 was introduced, and every iteration since, it's just been massive value add-ons each update. Each update, the introduction of track sacks, of drummer. I mean, a virtual drummer, you don't have to tap out drum beats anymore. Now you can just say, drummer, follow my bass guitar, and it just does it. It's just amazing. We have Smart Tempo, which completely takes this concept of tempo, throws it out the window. Now you can just record at whatever tempo feels good to you. You can quantize after, you can just have everything line up to your humanity, and it just does it. It's amazing. We have Alchemy, which is a powerhouse synth, retro synth, the whole legacy instrument collection of synths, we have amps, we have bass amps, we have guitar pedals, we have Apple Loops, thousands of Apple Loops, a brand new set of samplers, where you can even sample external synths, software instrument tracks. It's just the list goes on. And I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing that we have all these tools. The toolkit is just so well-rounded for creating music and mixing music. I mix music constantly in Logic. But I think Logic is increasingly becoming a tool for producers, for artists, for creatives, for creating. And Logic just kind of like getting out of the way for your creativity, which brings us to number three. Now, number three in our totally subjective list of why 10.5 is exactly what needed to happen for Logic Pro 10, I'm going to pose a question to you. And that question is, what is Logic Pro 10's purpose in our world? What's its niche in our world of creativity and audio? Is it supposed to be the Pro Tools killer? Is it supposed to be the Pro app that studios adopt across the world? I would say maybe not. Now, at the pro level, at the pro studio level, post-production houses, etc., they're using Pro Tools. That's the standard that's been ingrained into the industry. And frankly, I think that's fine. I think it's good and wonderful that it is Pro Tools and not some other options. Now, sometimes I feel like the industry kind of clings to Pro Tools like they would cling to the wheel of a car as it flies off a cliff. But that's me. That was maybe a little dicey to say. But I think that sometimes it's so ingrained that we're not willing to look at other tools that are available to us. Now, just take a step back and think about Apple, Logic Pro 10, think about Pro Tools and the users that use Pro Tools. You know, audio engineers, mastering, giants among men and women, right? Chris Lord Algae, Andrew Sheps, Sylvia Massey, they're, they're amazing at what they do, but just bear with me. Are any of these people a household name outside of our industry? I would be hard-pressed to believe that my parents, my grandparents, my friends would even know who these people are. And that's not to disparage them. They are amazing. You know, we're not worthy here. But then think about someone like Billie Eilish. Her and her brother recorded their whole album in Logic in a bedroom. Are they a household name? Uh, absolutely. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who hasn't heard the name Billie Eilish. Think about someone who hasn't used Logic or maybe doesn't. You know, Florence and the Machine. Kanye West, whoever the case may be. These are the people who push culture forward. I mean, if you look at Apple as a company, right? The company that owns Logic Pro 10, whether you agree with it or not, this is a company that has pushed culture forward with the Mac, with iTunes, with the iPod, iPhone, Apple Watch, iPad, etc. They have pushed our concept of what is real and what is possible. And I would be surprised and I would be a little bewildered if anybody thought that this kind of ethos would not bleed into Logic Pro 10. You know, I think some folks kind of look at these updates and say like, man, they're always focused on new features, not bug fixes, which is not true if you look at the release notes. But why would it not bleed into the Logic team and what they do for Logic Pro 10? Why would we not want innovations to our software that pushes the envelope and what we can expect 
a digital audio workstation to accomplish. This is what I believe is the difference. If I were to speculate, if we had to say, who is Logic built for and what's its purpose in our world of audio? I think it's to enable artists, creatives, producers, et cetera, to be able to create more effectively with the software just kind of getting out of the way so they can just start making stuff happen. And with these new features that have come along from drummer to smart tempo, to the new samplers, to step sequencer, to live looping, that is accomplishing exactly what Logic needs to do in our world. And that's to be the creative tool. And if you look at Apple's own marketing on their page for Logic on their website, in their press releases, et cetera, they just push this idea of unleashing creativity. And that's exactly what Logic needs to do. It needs to enable all of us to be able to create more effectively, be able to create music on the fly, on our MacBook, on our phone, whatever. And so at the end of the day, even though there are little details in Logic that we all wanna see improve, we all wanna see fixed, we all wanna see you know, change in a way that is even better than what it is, at the end of the day, I think Logic needs to focus on pushing culture, pushing creativity, pushing the tools that we need forward in a way that innovates so we can create more effectively. And so I think 10.5 was spot on and needed to happen. And I look forward to any new innovations that come our way. I think I'll be happy for a while. But again, I am loving the 10.5 update and I'm very excited for creating with it. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel. Why Logic Pro Rules are subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.